every time someone watching this video subscribes, I will give you a penny. If 1 million people subscribe because of this video, you get 10,000. 10 million people subscribe, you get 100,000. But to determine the winner, you guys will need to do a painting challenge. Lift up your paintbrush. Throw it to the side. <laughs> We are painting with our fingers. Again, the best one will win all the money for every time someone subscribes. The losers will get ice dumped on their head. You have four hours, time starts now. Viv, I know you're very good at finger painting and surprisingly, you have not won a single challenge yet. This might be the one though. So it's gonna change today? I'm hoping it will. So far, Mackenzie's won the most out of anyone here. Guys, this means that if someone needs to get punished, we know who we're going for, right? <laughs> Okay, wait, one question. Why isn't anyone starting? All right, first person to get any paint on the canvas will win something. Okay. All right, Viv, since you were the first one to put paint on the canvas, choose one person and they need to paint with their toe for an hour. Viv, I jumped in the pool for you. Oh my God, this right, is so Viv. cold. Oh my God. Viv, you're safe this time because Mackenzie jumped in I'm for you. Really Viv, it can be anyone. Who is it? I'm Mackenzie. Oh! Mackenzie, you just got stabbed in the back by Viv. Mackenzie, for the first hour, you have to paint with your big toe. Yeah. This is what you get out of jumping in the pool. Jake, what's the plan? I am making a finger themed creature mm. because we are finger painted. I'm gonna paint some sneakers, specifically some mochas. I'm gonna draw some colorful elephants. Keep in mind, you haven't won one yet. Imagine this, if you won all of them, you probably would have like 200,000 right now. That would have been great. But maybe this one? I'm painting a nice scenery. Again, this is my second time finger painting. This was Michelle's painting the first time, and I guess we can compare them and see if they're better. Well, if you want to know the quickest way to get a foot cramp, this is it. All right, well, good luck, everyone. We're around half an hour in. <laughs> Got my handy dandy reference. This is my own hand, by the way. Well, I can't move because I have paint on my foot that is wet. Viv, since you oh so gratefully blessed me with this challenge, I'm gonna need white paint and that little like, periwinkle color. There you go. It's been one hour, Mackenzie. You can start using your finger again. That is a really nice background, though. Ooh, all right, that's looking pretty good. Really? Kinda, yeah. It's not too bad. These rainbow elephants are looking pretty nice. Did you get inspiration from that rainbow elephant right yeah, here? Yeah, I saw it and I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is just gonna be like a trippy background to make that pop. It's a finger-themed creature. These are gonna be hands as wings. The hair is gonna be fingers, the legs are gonna be fingers, and obviously I'm gonna clothe my finger creature. Guys, we have a challenge. It is a very simple game of rock, paper, scissors. If you lose, you get ice water dumped on your head. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You're safe. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Michelle is safe. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! So it looks like Jazz gets some ice water. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh wait. <laughs> no, that's a rock. You get ice water. Guys, this is why you don't lose in rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Jake, we're not finished. What? That's only half? <laughs> Are we done now? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Jazz and Jake, don't lose next time. All right, so we're about an hour and a half in. I'm honestly surprised Mackenzie's doing so well, considering she had to paint with her toes. We'll have to see how well she paints with her finger, but it's looking really, really nice. Michelle's is doing okay. She has this turquoise road, and then she's trying to draw a couple trees. This is looking really, really nice. She took inspiration from a rainbow elephant. I think she's gonna do well. Jazz has some sneakers painted. It looks a little bit empty, but if she works on the background, she might be able to make a top two finish. I feel like Jake's is gonna end up being a wild card. It's really, really strange, but it looks kind of good. We still have around two and a half hours left. We have another mini challenge. You'll have a chance to win some money. Everyone, pull out your phone, go on to YouTube. So we have a new channel called ZHC Shorts. I'm gonna go check to see who subscribed to it. Mackenzie is not subscribed to ZHC Shorts. Michelle is not subscribed. <laughs> Michelle, you're the one who created it with me. How are you not subscribed? Viv is subscribed to ZHC Shorts. Are you subscribed though? I just found out ZHC Shorts was a thing, so. Okay. <laughs> You already know I'm subscribed, come on. Jake, you subscribed to the wrong one. <laughs> Jake did have the right intentions, but unfortunately, you subscribed to the fake ZHC shorts. I was gonna give everyone who subscribed to it $100, but since literally nobody else subscribed but you, you'll get everyone's money. You get 500. So moral of the story, subscribe. <laughs> In this tray, we have seven slips of paper. One of you guys could get eliminated right now. So you pretty much do whatever is on the paper. Add to a painting. 
Mackenzie. Mackenzie, are you gonna get revenge? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Your turn to choose. Help someone with an egg. <laughs> I might have to go with Jake. No! Oh. <laughs> This is getting a little intense. I have to sit out for 30 minutes. Pour ice on competitor. Yeah, uh, I chose Michelle. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Jess, it's been 30 minutes. You can keep painting. So the artists have around 45 minutes left and it's time to give them another challenge. What's gonna happen right now is, as a team, you will pick one person. That person will either get a punishment or they might get a little advantage. Oh, you guys yeah. vote and decide. All right, Jake. Jake. Yeah, Jake. I vote Jake too. I vote for Jasmine. So four votes Jake, <laughs> one vote Jazz, which means, Jake, you're gonna take a paper towel, you're gonna drench it in paint and throw it at whichever painting oh. you want. Go ahead and drench this in paint. Just wait, wait. Oh, oh. multiple. Colors. Whenever you're ready, Jake. Oh! Jake, you had one chance and you missed. Not gonna lie, the damage isn't that bad. All right, Jake, how do you think you're doing so far? I have the most original art piece here, but I'm gonna really have a hard time trying to outline these fingers. Who do you think is taking the dub? I think that <laughs> Viv is taking the dub. Viv, who do you think is winning? Either Ken's or maybe me, but I don't think that's an option. <laughs> if I gotta say, Mackenzie or Viv. I think Viv. Jake's is also pretty good. You have 35 minutes left. And we still have one more challenge. Artist, pick a person. Uh, Michelle. They get them with me for now. Michelle. Jazz. Jake. Ironically, Michelle is the one with the most followers and subscribers on YouTube. So yeah, subscribe to Michelle's YouTube channel. Follow her on Instagram. Michelle, I'll give you $100 to give to a random person. Oh, okay. Everyone, go wash your hands and then hold up your painting. So my painting is of an alligator. I like the trees over here. It looks really interesting how the alligators submerged underwater. You can clearly see that this part's underwater and then it gets darker on top. So it's a self-portrait of me. I'm in a bunch of pink trees. Very cute. The trees are nice. You could have cleaned it up down here a little bit. It looks a little messy. Overall, I'd say good improvement. Well, I got inspiration from the elephant over there. It looks a little lonely, so I made two baby elephants. Ooh, not gonna lie, I really like the tusks. I do like the color and the contrast with the background. It really makes everything pop, so yeah, good job. We have a very colorful, vibrant, beautiful, bodacious background. And then we have some legs floating out of the sky over there. I created a finger-themed creature. It looks very interesting. Comment what you think. So I am gonna eliminate one person at a time until we have two left. Then I'm gonna let my subscribers choose which one they like the best. I love all of these paintings. I would personally hang all of them up. Unfortunately, four are gonna be losers. Yeah. Jess, so. unfortunately, you've been eliminated. I'm so sorry. Michelle, yeah. incredible Michelle, I love it. Now with that being said, you've been eliminated. <laughs> Viv, say goodbye to Jake because Jake <laughs> Sorry, Jake. I just had to mess around with you guys a little bit. <laughs> so now it gets interesting. Viv, you've won zero challenges. Yep. Mackenzie, you've won more than anyone here. You've won three challenges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of them. The voting has begun. <laughs> Mackenzie, if you do end up winning this challenge, what are you gonna do with the money? To my family or for a car so I don't have to keep walking. The results are in. Remember, whoever wins gets a penny for every single person that subscribes because of this video. Three, two, one! Viv, <laughs> you won! The final result was 57% Viv, 43% Mackenzie. Viv will get a penny every time someone subscribes because of this video. This deal is for life. So in 20 years, if 10 million people subscribe because of this video, you get $100,000. Oh, Viv! Oh, Viv! And what did you say you were gonna use this money for? I'm gonna get a car and I'm gonna save it from Viv. Hey Viv, what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna be the one that pours the ice <laughs> on everyone else. Michelle, Jazz, Jake, get outside. I'm one, sorry, Michelle, go. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you, I hate you, Viv. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am 
here with Bill Gates today, and we will be packing backpacks to donate to students in need. Are you ready to get started? Fantastic. I don't know how good I am, but I'll do my best. And while we're packing these, I have some questions for you. Let's get started. First question is, how can young people make more of an impact on global issues? Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there now to learn about what life is like in poor countries. So, you know, we ought to be able to have more empathy towards people, more thinking about how to drive equality. I don't know, you know, can people get out there and actually visit? Once you get out and see things like malaria and malnutrition, it kind of drives you to get involved. I guess we're putting like one of everything in here. Oh yeah, I got some pencils over here. Can you make sure they have a sharpener too? Ooh, whoa, this looks kind of cool. It's like an elephant stapler. Nice. I think they'll like this. Uh, another question is how can young people best advocate for issues like climate change? Well, first thing is, you know, to realize their voice is very important. The scale of what we need to do is kind of mind blowing. Their entire lifetime, we're gonna be building the new infrastructure and, you know, changing a lot of the energy system, transport system, you know, the way we heat and cool buildings, the way we make food. So the first thing is to get smart about the issue, uh, then to think about the politics of it. We need, you know, both parties to get engaged, hopefully, and they've got a political voice. You know, they can get out and demonstrate, and they can even pick their career, you know, making sure they work for a company that's that's very engaged. I've known scientists who actually picked the area to study because they wanted to get involved with climate change. So, you know, 10 years ago, nobody studied cement and steel because it felt like, hey, those are solved problems. But now we need to completely change the way we make those things. So the fact that there's all this smart young kids that have said, okay, we'll, we'll learn that. We'll get involved in that because of climate. It's starting to make a huge difference. A little protractor. I don't know how much people use these. But... Do you know what this is? Uh, it's, it's no. It's like a little puffy thing. It, is this just if you're you're nervous, you just... Yeah, <laughs> it yeah I feel like I've seen these before. Just use this to like pop back and forth. Oh, maybe you could play tic-tac-toe by pushing them in. No, I don't think so. I think it's just fidgeting. Well, that's kind of fun. And what are, the, what are these? Oh, these are pencil sharpeners. Oh, of course, colored <laughs> pencil sharpeners. We got they have like little animals on them. Oh, those are erasers. I'm gonna give this student a penguin. If you get this backpack and you're watching this, I, I hope you like penguins. What are some of the biggest reasons you have hope for the future? Well, the general trend for humanity has been mostly upwards. You know, we used to have, you know, most kids would die when they were young. You know, we couldn't grow enough food. And these last several hundred years, even though we've invented a lot of stuff that's scary, like new weapons, we've also expanded life, the average lifespan over 70 years. Half the globe is literate now, which is, would be viewed as a miracle. You know, by objective measures, you'd rather be alive now than ever before. Now, when you invent things like using hydrocarbons so you have climate change, then you have to solve the problems you create, you gotta make sure that your weapons, like nuclear weapons, don't get used. But overall, life is far, far, far better today. Particularly if you zoom out and don't just think about the last three to five years, you say, okay, 50 years ago, you know, were women given equal opportunity? You know, did we respect uh, people from different backgrounds as much as we do today? So if young people keep being hopeful and innovative, like previous generations, you know, I think the best years for humanity are, are ahead of us. What a time to be alive. Oh, sketchbooks. I hope this student's an artist. Do you draw at all? I'm uh, not very good at it. I played a game, Telestrations, where you have to try and draw things. So it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of funny when people misinterpret what you thought you were drawing. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious, how much time do you put into the Gates Foundation and helping other people? Yeah, I'm super lucky. You, you could call it my second career because I retired from Microsoft and made that my full-time job. You know, there's a lot I didn't know about HIV, malaria, health systems in poor countries. Hadn't been around Africa to see what was going on there. And now, you know, I'm enjoying it as much as I did working on software. 
know, I get to travel the world, uh, meet with great scientists, go out and see which of our ideas are really working. I was on a farm in Kenya, and, you know, we had these new chickens that are bigger and healthier, and I was kind of amazed that you go from a conference room talking about better chickens, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, there's hundreds of millions of improved chickens, and kids are oh, getting wow. to eat eggs, <laughs> and women are making more money off their farm. It's really cool when it, it comes together, like getting the, the child to death rate cut in half is probably the thing we're most proud of. It's full time, still a little bit of work with Microsoft and uh, then my work on climate change. But global health is where I've had the most fulfillment this, this last decade. How big are the chickens now? They are big. I mean, they made me pick them up. It's a little scary. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, they're really big like this. And the eggs, they, you know, I was talking about how many more eggs they lay, but they said, no, you're really missing it. The eggs are also bigger. And then we use vaccines for chickens. Uh, that seems strange, but so that their chickens live a lot longer, you know, because they invest in feeding them and everything, and you want them to lay a lot of eggs. And these women were so passionate about the, the chickens. So I know this year the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is focusing a lot on empowering the youth with math. So why do you think it's such an important topic to focus on? Well, math, sadly, people get discouraged that, oh, that's just for the, you know, a few of the kids, not for us. And yet math is the way we understand the world. You know, how tall are people? How is healthcare improving? How do we spend the U.S. budget? You know, what's the best way of organizing a factory or designing a house? You know, all these things are mathematical. And it's so wonderful to, to be able to understand the world. And yet, you know, if you get discouraged with math and you decide it's for other people, you never get that opportunity. And so making it fun and interesting, you know, so you're not going over people's heads or you're not boring them with stuff they already know. You know, it seems like there's a real promise there. If you had, you know, a personal tutor, they're always trying to say, oh, you're getting bored. Let me, you know, try to come up with better examples. You know, I think we can supplement teachers, have much better curriculum, even use this latest AI stuff to kind of engage uh, different students. You know, so ideally, you know, everybody would like algebra and have a basic understanding of algebra. And statistics, I'd say. Not everybody needs calculus, but at least statistics and algebra. I actually really enjoyed statistics in high school. It was kind of fun. Yeah, it's, it's Statistics can be made really interesting. Like, you know, what's the variance in height? Or, you know, why have batting averages, you know, gone from being widely dispersed to now very clustered? You know, you can find topics people are interested in. And I'm always interested in health and, you know, what do people die of and which cancers? And it's all kind of statistics. I know my girlfriend recently started a channel and she does a lot of math on there. So, oh, wow. so I feel like a lot of our viewers enjoy math. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. You know, if you can make math fun, you'll end up actually surprising yourself by how much you use it to understand the world. Oh, we did a great job packing these backpacks. Oh yeah, we only have a couple more. Okay. I think we're running out of supplies over here. Stop. <laughs> what are some potential steps we need to take to be prepared for pandemics in the future? You know, pandemics don't come up very often. You'll have fires often enough, forest fires, building fires. You'll have earthquakes often enough that people have in mind. So, you know, when you build a building, you make sure it's, it's strong. Significant pandemics are kind of less than one per generation, or at least they have been. And so the idea of, okay, let's stay aware, let's have people train for this, you know, what tools to use, how do you get the diagnostics ready? You know, we were pretty inept. Uh, in fact, the countries that did the best were ones that another form of, of SARS, SARS-CoV-1, had come along, and they had to worry about that, even though that one uh, was well contained. So we just need a dedicated team. We need to practice. We do fire drills, you know, we do earthquake drills. Now, at least the public health people, they need to do drills where they saying, okay, if there's an outbreak, how do we get the diagnostics? How do we communicate with the public? How do we work with other countries and the vaccine makers? And are we inventing new tools using the latest biology for these things? And so, you know, now some people are just saying, ah, let's forget about the pandemic, it's gone. But it's not the last one. So keeping it in mind for people 
and getting global cooperation, you know, which is tough. You got wars going on, US and China aren't working that well together. And yet, you know, all of humanity's in this together. It's kind of us versus the bugs. And last time, you know, if you, the score is sort of bugs one, human zero in terms of how well we manage the situation. Like to do a little better next time around. How can gene therapy potentially cure diseases like HIV and sickle disease? Well, gene therapy is kind of this miraculous thing that you can literally go in and change how the cells work with that, you know, fundamental sort of software program that drives them. And of course we understand genetically what happens with sickle cell where your red blood cells are kind of misshapen. There are actually cases where for millions of dollars, people were cured of sickle cell. But unless we can make it like a thousand times cheaper, like a few thousand dollars, even the US, you know, that's too much money. But particularly in Africa, where you have most of the sickle cell, you need a pretty cheap solution. And so that uh, we've got, you know, some incredible scientists saying, okay, we just want to make it one shot and there's something in there that goes out to the right parts of the body, and then there's a payload that goes in and sort of edits the software and makes sure it's not editing anything except exactly what you're trying to target, no off-target things. And it really does look like, you know, if we, we keep with it for the next decade, uh, that we'll have this, this single-shot cure, both for sickle cell and for HIV. So that's a, you know, it's the kind of dream our foundation can help fund because you know we have 10 years and the impact would be great and so surprisingly good progress so far on that that ambitious agenda i'm actually learning a lot right now i didn't know much about gene therapy before this all right i think we've, we're doing good on our packing up here wow. yeah we're put almost the, done with this get the last set of crayons in there this backpack's going to be really full <laughs> so what steps need to be done to completely eradicate polio we are so close. The sad thing is, as long as you have any cases, it can spread back if you don't vaccinate the kids and you can have thousands or hundreds of thousands of cases. So we have to get like 95% of the kids vaccinated. We only have two countries where we've never gotten to zero, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And so even though there's a lot of turmoil there, we think we can get these vaccines. It's just a couple of drops that we give the kids. It's an oral vaccine and you know we are so close we like to say we're we're that close and you know, we've gone from 200,000 kids being paralyzed every year to less than a hundred now you know zero is a magic number if you get there then that's it it's like smallpox smallpox is the only disease that we've completely gotten rid of and so with luck in the next two or three years polio will become the second so I'm curious, Bill, what do you do in your free time? You know, I, I like to watch YouTube videos. If I sit down and, you know, ask about how various things are made or the science of different things that, you know, I can find my time, I just clicking on new things. I like to take courses, you know, even though it's weird, I'm a dropout, but I've probably taken as, certainly I've probably taken more college courses than you generally think of a dropout. So in fact, there's so much great information online, you know, and things can, can be explained and you know then I have to learn about farming because for the foundation helping poor farmers is a big thing I have to learn about the latest in disease and it's fun you know I'm I'm kind of a full-time student and it's never been a better time to be a curious person you know all that information is there in such a an easy to learn form have you ever watched this really cool channel called CHC uh, not much. Should I watch it more? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you should check it out. You might like All it. All right, fantastic. <laughs> I'm probably above your age demographic, but I'm sure I'll love it. <laughs> hey guys, Bill Gates watches our videos. You bet, <laughs> you bet. Oh, there's a Microsoft Surface Go 3. Oh man, those things are nice and small. I'll have to, I'm gonna put one of those in my oh, yeah. backpack. Well, I think we're about done packing. Yeah, that was fun. And the cool thing is that we're gonna make another 100 of these backpacks, and these are gonna be donated to students in need. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for uh, doing this with me, and it was fun packing backpacks with you. I think we both did a great job. I love your creativity. We, we, we did a great job. Perfect, thank you. All right, so we are now here at Bastrop Middle School, and this is Carol. She is a seventh grade math teacher. Uh, we have 100 backpacks filled with school supplies to donate. I hope the students can put these supplies to good use. Thank you so very much for supporting us.
feel a little awkward vlogging in front of so many vloggers. Let's go to round one. You are a very good content queen. I sound like a casual. I'm not gonna lie. I can very much tell I am no longer in Texas because my skin is not getting blistered by the sun. Along with very visible cupping marks. It makes me look more masculine. The squad is going to the arcade to get a bit of content from what I've heard. I hope this is the one with Candy Crush! Last time I crushed it. Can you get me plushies this time? Plushies? Last time you got me like five plushies. Are you guys nervous at all for video convention? No. No, I'm so excited. No, I'm actually, yeah. You should show what you got. A really sweet fan came up to me and she made me a bracelet that says CHC. It was pretty cool. She's coming to our meet and greet. We have maybe like, actually I'm not sure the exact number, but we have a ton of AirPods ready to give to fans that uh, come up to us. However, it says we're not allowed to announce giveaways at VidCon. We're not gonna announce it, we're just gonna do it. Dad, one of my favorite boba places. Seven leaves? Seven leaves. I love seven leaves. Seven That's leaves? That's right. You know it's good when the agents say it's good. Yeah. All right, we are at the arcade. I feel like arcades are part of my childhood. It is a little bit awkward that I'm filming right now, so I'm gonna try to keep it kind of low key. Oh my goodness, bro, they have so many cute plushies. Those bears right there, that's the emoji Michelle and I used to send each other all the time doing our honeymoon days. Michelle, do you remember this emoji? Oh yeah! Oh my goodness. Michael, I want the octopus. It's so cute. It's practically kissing me, I can feel it. Hey, I'm calling it right now. First try. What? No. Zach, you clearly need to go a little bit more to the right. at the arcade, I always go to the basketball machine because even though I kind of suck at basketball in real life, apparently I'm pretty good at the arcade ones. Usually I beat Ben and Jake, but I might go a little easy depending on if I win or lose. So we're done with the arcade. You know, I feel like the arcade reflects a lot on your life. You take chances, you win big. Sometimes you just need to go for the big moments and, and I feel like that's what the arcade's all about. It was very real when I beat you in bowling. Jake, it's just a game, chill. <laughs> chill, Jake, it's just a game. <laughs> Bye, arcade. Bye, arcade. It was fun while it lasted. All in a day's work. Good job, team. Woo! Woo! For those of you fans, <coughs> Curry, <coughs> Lisa, if you guys are watching this, my DMs are always open for you two. I'd love to do anything with you. Have you like California so far, Katie? I like it a lot, actually. Wait, is this your first time here? Yep. Driving stuff that way. Yeah, how do you like your choice? Cutting this guy off. Oh! We're here. <laughs> hey, you're learning fast. <laughs> Okay, we just got back from the arcade. We are back at the hotel right now. Zach went night night on me today a bunch yep. of times. I went 0 and 10, Zach went 10 and 0. That was exactly Zach's reaction when I uh, completely and utterly destroyed him. And actually, yeah. wait, wait, what bowling? We, we didn't yeah, are we cutting that out? Oh, Jake, Jake no. we didn't go bowling today. What Editor, please put the bowling clips <laughs> in. Jake, what are you talking about? We didn't go bowling. Put the bowling in, please. That's my only dub. <laughs> <laughs> so we are getting ready for a meet and greet today. I did my hair. I have a new shirt, nice shoes on, some some fun rainbow pants. I normally don't really do my hair or anything or clean up this much or care about what I dress. But I mean, if you guys are coming all the way out here to see me, I think you guys deserve the best. Ta -da! Still nervous, but all dressed up. All good. All right, boys, it's showtime. Ready to go. All right, so you guys see that case over there? We have a ton of AirPods and sketchbooks and stuff, so we have a lot of stuff to give you guys. I heard that a lot of you guys were coming out to see us and hang out with us and meet us, and I felt bad not giving you guys anything. So 
I got you guys some stuff. And we painted them too, so it looks cool. It's showtime. Oh, yeah. We have a nice smoothie to get energized for this morning and coffee. I'm not part of the coffee gang. When I was eight, my parents said no coffee and I've been following that rule ever since then. Jake, we should go bowling one of these days. We should. I heard you're decent, but... I heard you lose bowling a lot. I don't know who said that. All right, we are here. My hair is sticking up. Oh, it's back down. The Mike G. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah, featured creator, featured, featured creator gang. <laughs> we just walked into the venue. I have no idea where we are actually, but this is definitely not where we're going Let's to be Let's go Warriors. Okay, now we're getting into some venues here. With all the fans that take pictures with us, we can be like, okay, three, two, one, three, three. No. For some reason today I'm feeling pretty hyper. I don't know if it's like the ADHD kicking in or if I'm excited to meet you guys, but I'm definitely feeling it right now. Sorry, Zach. Bye, Zach. Bye, Zach. Bye, Zach. No, I'm losing. Pedal to the metal. It's fine. Oh. Oh, we're done. We're here. Thank you so much. It smells like popcorn in here. Alright, hurry, hurry. Wait, where are we supposed to go? There's a lot of people. Don't stray too far from the side. My goal of this midcon trip is to get everyone in our meeting group to do the night night. Spot right now, Ken's. Are you excited? Oh, the camera! I'm about so to die. excited. Yeah, I saw, I saw some die. sprites. Uh, I'm ready. So There's guys. snacks. I am hungry. This is the only time I get to dress up nice because I'm always painting and ruining my clothes. So I always wear bad clothes to work. So normally I get really nervous to meet people, but this is a little different. We are meeting the real ones today, so I'm pretty excited. What? Two years ago, I would have been one of these fans trying to meet. Yo, ben, <laughs> I would have met you at been gone. <laughs> No, 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 you would have been like this. I would have been like, Zach, Zach, can I take a photo? No. All right, but in all seriousness, Ben was an amazing artist, so we became very good friends. I was hearing that there was a big line outside. There's a big line outside? Well, there's definitely going to be more than 50. Okay, we're just going to peep through the curtains to see if there's anyone there. If it's more than one person, I'll be happy. Zach's peeking through the curtains. Let's oh. go. That's a lot of people. Zach, all those people are camping out for you. Dang, I wish I bought more AirPods for them. All right, it's showtime. We have our little gifts in there. I'm not sure if we'll have enough for everyone, but we got some extra sketchbooks to do little sketches for everyone else. So hopefully everyone's happy. Just to give you the spiel, like I'm uh -huh. Wilt. I'm gonna be the photographer today. It's gonna be my role to be the bad guy in all of this. Oh, okay. Keep people moving just so you can get all the, the 250. Okay. okay, sounds good. I wanna do like a quick like 15 second sketch for everyone. If it's really fast. Well, I draw pretty fast. It's so. like, I, basically, I have to get each person in under about 30 seconds. Challenge accepted. It's, it's, it's got to be rough. Get the sketchbooks ready. Get the get the AirPods yeah. ready. This is a challenge video right now. We have two hours, 250 people. We're gonna get all of them sketches. We're gonna get all of them to hit the night night. We have two hours. Hit, hit the night night. Yeah. Well, well, well. Jordan, Devon. You guys. No way. Yeah. Well, I They're here. fans, Michelle. You think I have a meet and greet? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay, we didn't go out. Okay. Michelle, you talked to the fans. Jake and Mackenzie, you guys prep the AirPods. Make sure they're open, ready to go. Ben, you got the sketchbooks and the Sharpies. Are you guys ready to go out? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, go. Hello. <laughs> Let's go. Great. 
hair trim smile. Right. Guys, I'm ready this time. Yeah, Jake, you're finally Hello. ready. Hello. 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 Here you go. This is for you. This is for me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What's your name? Andy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can you sign it? Yeah. Can we put it here? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Hello. This is for you guys. Wow. We did a little. So do plushie. Don't worry, you got one too. Nice to meet you. Nice guys. to meet you guys. Thank you so much for uh, you know sketch a lot and and giving a lot for all these cool stuff, man. <laughs> from the dinosaur. Nice to meet you. Oh. Oh, you get extra detail uh, on yours. You get a good pump badge as well. Did you have the last one you got the best girl? <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Night night. 